What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology, which also includes hair care. So, <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about some of the biggest mistakes we see with hair care and then also some of the solutions and how to correct those mistakes. So one of the things with hair, and then we always say this, is that once you start losing your hair or you cause damage to the actual scalp that damages the hair follicles, a lot of times you don't get those hair follicles back. So avoiding these mistakes can actually be paramount to avoiding hair loss and permanent damage to your scalp that's irreversible. So common hair mistakes and their solutions. Here we go. Here we go. We just wanna thank Necessaire for sponsoring this video. They just direct so much of their attention and redirect our attention, I think sometimes warranted off of the face and to the rest of our entire body. So they're partnering with us to help bring you these hair care mistakes and solutions. So we're definitely guilty of this, of focusing probably too much on facial skincare and not enough on the rest of the body. One of Necessaire's kind of mottos here is treat your body like your face, treat your hair like your face. You want ingredients that are gonna be both effective and safe for these areas. And a lot of times we're saying, don't use this on the face or do use this on the face. And then we're not applying those same principles to the body and the hair. And Necessaire does a really good job with their range of products focusing on those. So let's talk about the first hair mistake that we often see and what you can do instead. So the first thing is kind of almost one of the first steps to underwashing or overwashing your hair. Oh man, this is one that I hear all the time, right? Like, oh, you're washing your hair too much or you're not washing your hair enough. And is there a rule to this or is this something that can actually be flexible? I feel like this is becoming a reoccurring theme for our channel. I don't know why, but this is highly personalized to you. In case you've missed this, like in the beginning of the channel, this is still the case. Skin care is very personalized. Hair care is very personalized. So this is actually very dependent on your skin, your scalp, and your hair. So let's just kind of put it out there. How often do you wash your hair? I do it twice a day. I wash my hair at least once a day. And, and some people would say, oh, you're absolutely insane. You can't wash your hair once a day. That's so damaging to your hair. No. So if I didn't wash my hair, I have very straight, flat hair normally. If I didn't wash it every day, it would it would, it would would lay completely flat. It'd be really held down. Like, I, like it would have no volume to it because it just, the buildup on it gets crazy. That's actually both of our life goals is to, in our life battles, is to voluminize our hair. Some people have the opposite problem, but both of us want a little bit of extra height, maybe, I don't know. Both of us, we feel like we need to wash our hair every day or twice a day even, whereas other people, people with curly hair, uh, people with different textured hair, definitely can't be washing their hair every day. So this is definitely very individualized to you. If you're noticing a lot of breakage, it could be from overwashing. If you're noticing a lot of oil and dandruff in your scalp, then it could be because you're underwashing. And so you need to really listen to your scalp and your hair when you're making that decision. Right, so overwashing, underwashing. I wash my hair twice a day just because I'm active and it's just what I need. For people who might be overwashing their hair, you might be someone with a dry, itchy scalp. It might be winter. You might have just very fragile, brittle hair or voluminous, frizzy hair. People who might benefit from washing more frequently include those who have acne. How would washing your hair help? Well, if you're not washing your hair nightly, you might be leaving some of that hair product on your pillowcase. So ensuring that that's all gone before you go to bed can actually help your acne. People who have a scaly scalp, especially initially when you're starting these anti-dandruff treatments, using that more frequently at first can be a helpful way to knock that back. And then also an oily scalp. I think some people, you just kind of inherently know if you don't wash your scalp daily, that grease and oil just kind of builds up quickly. So again, no hard rules. We can't tell you exactly what you need to do, but just know we're encouraging you to just just treat your scalp like your scalp. No one's scalp routine is gonna be perfect for you. This is one of those situations where you wanna ignore what other people are doing and listen to your own scalp conditions because someone's gonna tell you, oh, you're washing your hair too much and they're gonna be wrong. Someone's gonna say you're not washing your hair enough and they're also gonna be wrong. So just listen to yourself. The next mistake that we see is being too rough on your scalp and the solution, be gentle. <laughs> right, so one of the things that I was realizing was I was telling everyone, don't use this on the face, don't use this on the body. And then one day I'm in the shower looking at the back of my shampoo and I realize like everything that I'm saying not to use is in there. These preservatives that are really bad are really highly allergenic, these fragrances that I don't like, and they're in my shampoos, in my conditioners, they're trickling down onto my face, onto my body, and could potentially be causing issues in those areas. What you really wanna do is look for gentle ingredients. You wanna look for products that are fragrance-free, 
that are pH balanced, that have minimalistic ingredients. They're gonna get the job done by removing dirt, debris, hair care buildup, and at the same time, not over irritate the scalp or the hair. I think a little plus in the category list is look for soothing ingredients. So not only can you be selective in what you allow in, you can also be selective in what additional things you look for. Treat your hair and scalp like you would treat your face. It's really that simple. Um, and so I think there's a lot of space in the hair care industry to bring about scientific research. And I think Necessary is really ahead of the game with this one because with their scalp duo, they're really bringing skincare to the hair. <laughs> That's a good rhyme. So Necessary released their shampoo, the shampoo, shampoo and the conditioner. <laughs> Both of these are fragrance free. Um, of course, similar packaging to what you see with the body set. So if you've tried those products before, you're going to be dealing with similar packaging. Um, definitely overall, we're looking at products that are going to be very effective at getting the job done, but at the same time are not going to irritate the skin or have a high risk of allergy. So let's talk about some of the beneficial ingredients. So the shampoo, they go with their gentle plant-based surfactants. And then in addition, they have their soothing ingredients, which include aloe, always nice on the skin, niacinamide, panthenol, and then glycerin. So things to bring not only that soothing aspect, but also some hydration to the table as well. So these are the similar surfactants and ingredients that you would see in a cleanser on the face, except it's formulated for the scalp so that it's able to remove all that residue and buildup on the scalp and in the hair. I really like that concept and I think we're gonna see that more and more in your hair products is really trying to bring science to these things. Really good, what is your experience with this overall? Right, so the thing I like about this, I've had this available now I feel like at least a couple of months and I've been trying it consistently. It really feels like you would expect. It's very gentle, very lightweight, not a heavy lather and it does a great job at removing just simple debris and that everyday wear and tear gunk that's on my scalp. So for me, I actually, I style my hair every day. My hair product is more of like a clay wax and a lot of my shampoos don't do a good job removing that and then I'm left with a lot of residue and that residue starts to weigh down my hair over time. I found that this shampoo is actually really good at cleaning the hair so I don't feel like I have a lot of residue and buildup but at the same time it's not like really drying out my hair and making it feel like I used a clarifying shampoo. So it's just like that perfect in between for me. But I felt like it wasn't fair for me to evaluate this alone because I felt like I my hair is too short in order to evaluate it completely. And so I made my wife also use this for a few weeks, actually over a month now. And she had the similar experience where she felt it wasn't drying out her hair too much, but at the same time was able to leave it clean. Another thing too, so I got these products in the mix just randomly. I get I get products, we get products all the time. They show up like, oh, oh cool. And I, you, you follow me on Instagram, so I put these up. I was like, I can't wait to try these. And so I tried them out for a while. No idea anything was coming down the road. So I had like this just completely open mind. So I wonder how these things are gonna land and it actually really did well for me. Right, and then I told him, oh, by the way, we're doing a video on these on YouTube. He's <laughs> like, like, oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness I didn't hate them. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, so we both ended up loving these and using these. All right, and when you're applying this, one of the things I've become like a big fan of, and we'll put a link in the description of these like silicone brushes when you're applying your shampoo. They're like $7 on Amazon, they're not expensive, but basically trying to get that shampoo into your scalp area and really get it a good lather with it. A lot of times, I I don't get like that good massage with my hands and I find that these like little silicone brushes just kind of do a little bit extra for me. So definitely worth checking out, just something new I've added to my hair routine. I feel like his hair routine does a lot. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so next up, let's talk about the conditioner from Necessaire. Be honest, how often do you use conditioner? Almost never, right? Because if I use conditioner, my hair lays more flat. It's just not my goal. On the days that I'm not planning to style my hair, which is becoming less and less for me, because I shoot so much video all the time lately, conditioner is so helpful if you have damaged hair, if you have color treated hair, it makes a huge difference. If you have curly hair, frizzy hair, you definitely need a conditioner. For me, uh, because I like to style and get that volume, I don't use it as frequently, but when I do, it does make a big difference. And my wife has to use conditioner, right? Mm -hmm. If she doesn't use conditioner, then she'll say that her hair is frizzy and unmanageable. So if you're somebody that needs conditioner, this is a great option for you. It has a lot of beneficial ingredients. So it does have hyaluronic acid, which we've talked about hyaluronic acid in videos before as a hair hack. So I love that it's in this hair dedicated product. And then it also has niacinamide. It also has panthenol, just amazing foundational soothing ingredients. It's pH balanced fragrance free. I mean, it's it's a great, great product. Again, skincare for the hair. 
ultimately is what it comes down to. So not going to, you know, clog your pores, not going to cause irritation on your scalp, not going to cause irritation on your body as these things sort of trickle down as well. So just calming and soothing and going to get the job done. My experience with both these products has been really good, you know, pretty consistent with what I've found with necessary products in general. Overall, I'm really happy with these. I think all of you will like these. And again, going back to this, you don't want to do things that are too irritating to the scalp. Use products that you would use on your face. So the next mistake is treating the wrong Thing. And the solution to that is treating the right thing, right? <laughs> We're gonna try to flip this, make it a little bit more positive. So one of the things is the necessary shampoo, right? Like, you know, if you have dandruff, right? And I tell you, okay, like these necessary shampoos are great. You're thinking to yourself, well, if I buy these products that they say is great, it's gonna treat my dandruff or it's gonna treat my psoriasis or it's gonna treat whatever condition I have on the scalp. And ultimately that's not true, right? Cause you wanna be using products that are actually treating the condition that you have. So these are not dandruff shampoos. They may help within a dandruff routine, but you actually want active ingredients that treat dandruff. Dandruff is caused by a yeast on the scalp. That yeast leads to inflammation. That inflammation leads to scaling and flaking. Really, you wanna go after that yeast. And so the ingredients to do that are ketoconazole, salicylic acid, selenium sulfide, and zinc pyrithion. There's this thing about zinc pyrithion, pyrithion, whatever. It's going to be actually banned in the EU. So we'll kind of watch how this unfolds. We'll talk more a little bit about this at another time. So that ingredient may not be something you'll find anymore over the counter. Another thing too, not all scaly scalps are sebderm, right? So psoriasis, Dr. Shaw alluded to this as well. Coal tar is actually probably the greatest over the counter option for this because it not only targets the scale, it targets the actual proliferation, hyperproliferation of the skin. And then also similarly hair loss, you know, make sure you have the right condition, the right cause of your hair loss. That's not some underlying autoimmune condition or inflammatory condition. So all that to say, make sure you know what you're treating, target your ingredients towards that, and then you can kind of commit to knowing you're making progress. So when it comes to dandruff, one of my favorite shampoos is the Nizerol shampoo because it has the 1% ketoconazole in it. And then you can also alternate with this one that has the 3% salicylic acid, which is the Neutrogena T-Sal. And if you have psoriasis, a good over-the-counter regimen is to actually rotate the T-Sal and the T-Gel. One has salicylic acid, the other one has coal tar, you're gonna be treating by two different mechanisms, but both are gonna have efficacy together. So be deliberate about what you're treating on your scalp. So another mistake that we see with people that oftentimes refuse to believe that they're making is when you're using really tight hairstyles. Yes, okay. We see this so often in the real world, like so often. And I'm actually starting to see this on social media a lot more frequently, which I'm kind of thankful for. But what happens is people who wear their hair in tight hairstyles, ponytails, pull back, brunchies even, whatever. Right. Braids. braids. It pulls the hair up from the shaft and this progressive pulling and traction eventually leads to a scarring alopecia or hair loss that is permanent and irreversible. And so people will think they have just like a receding hairline and they don't put two and two together, but really over a period of years to decades, that hairline permanently is being moved back just purely from the traction and tension on the hair shaft. We call this traction alopecia. If you biopsy the scalp, you can actually see these changes that are happening at the hair follicle level. It's permanently damaging your scalp by having really tight hairstyles like that. I tell this to people and they're like, no, there's no way that's the reason why this is happening. From a physiologic standpoint, it absolutely is the cause of a lot of hair loss. Loose hairstyles make a big difference. Don't have too much tugging on the scalp. It can permanently and irreversibly damage your hair. And the last mistake we see people making is using too much heat on the hair. So there are multiple ways to diffuse this. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's a diffuser. That right. was a dad joke. <laughs> So that was the worst dad joke of all time. Yeah, but I came up with it on the spot. I, had, I know, he had this He had this one. You know you were playing that. No, I actually moment. wasn't. As I was lifting it up, the joke came to mind. That's okay. how spontaneous that was. All right, so what are some things that you can do? So we know that heat can be damaging to the scalp. It can also be damaging to the hair. So one simple thing that you can do is just turning down the heat settings on your blow dryer, turning the heat settings down on your straighteners, right? So just keeping those settings low um, and just taking a little bit more time with it. It'll take longer to do the hair, but it'll be more gentle on the hair. And then obviously like the diffuser itself will help diffuse the heat and spread it out more evenly instead of focusing like just a very hot central burst. Now we'll caveat this in here too. There's not a lot of science behind this, um, which is I think why uh, it's hard to speak definitively on these things because a lot of it's again experiential based. And I mean, realistically, we don't and haven't had long hair for a while now. I used to have long hair and I used to kind of have long hair, but so because there's not a lot of science here, we have to lean on our own experiences, our experience with our patients and actually reaching out to our colleagues that are in the hairdressing, hairstylist fields, right? So we actually kind of compiled that data and kind of some of the things that 
showed up consistently was using a heat protectant, of course, and we'll link some good ones below. But essentially, after you cleanse your hair, you wanna apply a heat protectant, rough dry, and then blow dry the hair. So by rough drying first, you are getting it like halfway there, two thirds of the way there before you introduce the heat to do the final steps with the blow dry. Uh, additionally, if you're someone who curls or straightens your hair, instead of doing it 100% with the heating tool, you, I mean, you can either one, turn down the heat on your heating tool, or two, you can do an alternative method. There's a, there's a sock method that we were shown. You take your hair, you wrap it around the sock, and the wetter you wrap it, the tighter the curl will be when you're done, and then you loosen it up, and you have like this beautiful wavy curl at the end of it, or there's a robe method, but there are sorts of fun hacks that you can kind of structure your hair, and while it dries and that disulfide bond set, and then it will come out and you'll have more volume or shape to it that you want. Yeah, so you can try some of these things out there. Um, I don't know if I'd have the patience for that, but the sock method does look pretty cool. Ultimately, the idea is not to use very high heat settings because that can damage the hair, dry out the hair, and then you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to repair that hair. So I think, I mean, it's the same as setting in front of a hot fan or something. We notice in the winter time because of the heat that's blowing into people's houses, people's skin dries out tremendously. And so similarly, you'll find that people's scalps dry out tremendously with these standard hot methods of drying your hair. And that heat protectant is meant to be targeted at the hair shaft, right? And not the scalp. So these are our top hair mistakes to avoid and some of the things that you can do instead to keep your hair looking healthy. And we'll probably do more videos on hair care in general, because it definitely is within our wheelhouse and expertise and nail care. Yeah, overdue. That Shout out overdue. to Necessaire for sponsoring this video and always just, you know, being supportive of our work, but putting out products that are beneficial, not just for the face, but the body and the scalp as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Necessaire, for being a part of this. And then for all of you for being a part of this whole journey with us. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.